that's part of the you know the subtlety of of Tolkien because he's very clear in his letters that that Frodo fails in the quest. He he gets to the final point, he gets to the critical point, and he denies he denies the quest. He says, "No, I will not do it." And he seizes the ring for himself. He fails, and this for Tolkien becomes a meditation. He makes a meditation on the um the last passage of the Lord's Prayer. Um, you know, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Frodo has precisely been taken past the point of his endurance. His will has been broken by the power of the ring. But because he willingly gave himself up to that, and because he exercised mercy, which is a religious theme so important in the Lord of the Rings, he exercises mercy and pity. Because of that, providentially, he is saved even through his, his failure but he does fail. And I think that's a really important point because Tolkien's not making a simplistic argument about, or a simplistic presentation that, oh, if you just, if you just have faith, everything will, will be okay. That I think is part of the strength of, of the book. It's so spiritually realistic because Frodo gives everything and he's broken by it. He, he fails, it's redeemed, but I think one of the saddest and most moving parts of the book is that he never heals in this life. He goes back to the Shire and there's that just heart-wrenching line when he says to Sam, yes, the Shire has been saved, but not for me. Mm. He's too wounded to even enjoy it. He, he, cannot, he cannot be healed in this life. His healing has to come in the next life. And that is simply the case so often for us in this in this life. You know, there are wounds that we will not have healed in this life. Uh, so this is a real, I think, spiritual depth and 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 subtlety and realism that Tolkien brings into this. Yeah, it it, it seems almost therapeutic for those who are really invested in reading these books when you're living just your own life. I mean, those scars that won't heal, the wounds, but there's still like this glimmer of hope that it will be. Um, I saved the word you catastrophe for the end of our interview, but we might as well just jump in right now because Frodo's, Frodo fails. There's a catastrophe and life's filled with cat catastrophe. There's evil. There's tons of darkness all around us. And that's why I think this, this book is so, this novel is so powerful. There's just so much darkness, but these bursts of gold. What does this word you catastrophe that he coined made up he made up a lot of words. Uh, what does this word mean, uh, and and how does it make sense of of his faith? Well, the the word eucatastrophe is made up of, of two parts. There's catastrophe, which we get, you know, the the overturning, the you know, the 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 upheaval, and then eu eu. Um, that's where we get, for instance, utopia. It's the Greek for good. So, um, eucatastrophe is the good catastrophe. And for Tolkien, it expresses the happy ending that comes when you think that no happy ending is possible. It's the light that comes when you think that darkness has completely fallen. And you know, one of the things that I that I talk about in in the uh, in Tolkien's faith is the way that this is is really profound. That this is not a correlative of the hope of the optimist. But rather the hope of of the of the pessimist in the sense, it's when you think everything has has ended, when you're sure that it's all done, that there's no happy ending possible. That's when the eucatastrophe comes, that inbreaking of light, and and that Tolkien says is related to the resurrection, because and he says this in his his great essay on fairy stories in the epilogue. That essay, he says that the Incarnation is the eucatastrophe of human history, and the resurrection is the eucatastrophe of the story of the incarnation. And you know, we can even get used to this the story. You know, we know that with the Christ rises again, but for for the disciples, seeing you know the he was going to be the Messiah, and he is now dead. He's dead. Mm -hmm. He's in the tomb. It cannot get any worse than this. This is the end. And so his resurrection is, is the eucatastrophe par excellence. And so Tolkien argues that the very reason that we respond to a happy ending in fiction, whether we know it or not, 
is because it's a glimmer of light of that cosmic eucatastrophe. That that's why we respond to it. Um, we're catching a glimpse of that light, you know, coming through the story to, to us. Mm. Yeah, it makes me think of the Emmaus, the, the the Emmaus story in Luke, where they they said, I, "We thought he was going to be the one to redeem Israel," and they're they're walking away from Jerusalem. I mean, given up on the story, and uh, yeah. yeah, it's important for us to sometimes feel that a lot more than we do because we already know the ending, um, and so to feel that. Um, I think is important. Uh, and, and you can't really have a sense of that, that resurrection, that you catastrophe without feeling that darkness and loss of hope at first. So, and I think that's something that, um, a lot of Christian writers and preachers and apologists don't quite trust the power of, of the catastrophe. They want to hurry on to the happy ending without recognizing fully, you know, that we are sitting in darkness in the shadow of death and as a result, the Christian message can so often seem trite, shallow. Oh, mm -hmm. just trust Jesus and everything will be okay. Well, there can be an awful lot of suffering um, between now and it will eventually be better than okay. But there could be a lot of agony between now mm -hmm. and then. And that's part of, of the process, um, mysteriously, in some cases. And I think it's so tempting and so harmful to want to skip past that and not fully recognize it or conversely to, to dwell in it or to revel in it and to forget there is anywhere to go. Um, but I think for Christians, the temptation is stronger to try and just skip over the darkness 